a couple of years down the road, you are uh, backstage at like a uh, an outdoor amphitheater. Backstage. Yeah. Okay. Am I watching a band? So you are uh, about to perform on the New Metal Comedy Festival. What? I'm like the least New Metal median. So There's like, gotta be so many better choices than me. Well, so their their thing is it's kind of like how, um, you know how like the Insane Clown Posse every year they have their gathering of the Juggalos. Yeah. Well, it's it's um. It's kind of like in the spirit of that almost because they'll have acts that aren't, you know, juggalo acts. You know what I mean? They have like other people come who are outside of that, you know, that whole world to be like, hey, these are the people that we like. We think you'll like them, too. And so, yeah, you're not like super new metal, but, you know, you still got a pair of jinkos in that fucking closet of yours. You mean still? You've always Never held on to a guy. No, come on, Pat. You had a you had a one pair, and you just felt like one day you'll need those Jinkos. That means I would have been carrying them with me for like well over half my life. Yeah, and I'm I'm not doing that with any pair of pants. But these are Jinkos. When you were growing up, back in do. Bo, Illinois. Six two two three nine. You feel like all the cool kids wore Jinkos, and you really wanted to to wear them, you know. But you guys couldn't uh, afford Jinkos. You had to get like off brand Jinkos. So uh, your, yours were called Junkos. <laughs> yeah. Oh, great! How fucking yeah. humiliating. I cannot tell you how triggering this is for me right now. So you uh, you you grew up a little bit, and then you were like, you know what? I don't have much, but I can definitely swing a pair of Jinkos. You walk into, um, there's a uh, the largest uh, hot topic on the West Coast. You go there. Um you walk in they're like uh this guy uh clearly the manager he's like uh standing kind of at like the front of the store uh he's wearing a name tag it says uh T- dave rule yeah r r u h l yeah and it says manager and then underneath that it says his uh, his email address dave rule rules at gmail.com yeah he's like oh uh you know hey uh, how can i help you and you're like uh yeah i'm looking for some jinkos and he looks at you and he's like you've come to the right place my man so you have like this pair of jinkos almost as you don't like ever plan on really wearing them necessarily but you have them as a reminder because hanging right next to that pair of jinkos is a Pressed pair of Junko shorts. You have both. This sucks. You have the uh the Jinkos to kind of sh- tell show yourself what you've done in life, what you've been able to accomplish, you mm-hmm. know? And you have that pair of Junkos hanging in your closet. So that you never forget where the fuck you came from. Jesus Christ. You know, I've done a really good job of letting go of physical manifestations of trauma. You know, I've done a pretty good job of like not having that pair of Junkos in my closet anymore. Yeah. This sucks. The fact that. But you bought them like you like you got them on purpose to be like, look, man. Yeah, I don't have I don't need that anymore. Yeah, I've moved. I've fuck. This is not good. So you knew that one day you'd probably need that pair of Jinkos. So you like 
slid them on. Am I in a bad place? No. No, man. Things could not. To be honest with you, Aaron, as far as like the like the creative work that you're doing, you could not be doing work that you're more proud of. Yeah, but what about the rest of my life? It's good, you know. Sure. You um, you know, you see uh, your friends on occasion, you know. You and I talk every day, so that's good. Um, you were um, you were going to um, ask this girl out that you met, yeah. but uh, it turned out that uh, she was uh, an android. <laughs> Jesus Christ! So she was like, um. She was like, Aaron, as much as I appreciate your uh, your interest in me, um, you know, I'm an android, so I can't, you know, can't really reciprocate like that, you know, but right. it's like may uh, as well have been, you know, that doesn't sound too far off from like my normal experience as of late. Yeah. A rejection letter, like a form letter. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, but she's like, she says it just because it's because she's like, you know, she'll be, she's like, she's like activating let down easy dot exe oh, and then it's like aaron you're a really great guy you know like she does like the whole thing you know just i wouldn't believe that she was an android so now i'm gonna feel like an insane person telling my friends yeah, yeah she told me she was a fucking android and she executed a file and it was called let down easy like so, what an insane person i'm not gonna believe she, that i went on a day with a fucking android she hands out or she uh, holds out her left arm and like a, a compartment like opens, you know what I mean? Great. So I was Off seeing of, an Android. Yeah. And inside I there's a bunch of like an emotionless creature. Of course I would. She was really funny. Yeah. That's what first attracted you is that she, she got all your jokes, you know, right. And even if she didn't always laugh, she, she like program. She, right. We know that now. Yeah. So what a fucking waste. So there's a bunch of like us, uh, like switches and like wires and stuff on her inside her arm. There's a um, there's a switch uh, that that's that just says like a question mark, and she kind of like looks at you and kind of like raises her eyebrows at you. Would you flick the switch? Fuck no. I'm not flipping a goddamn switch inside of an android's arm. If it wants to, if it wants to switch flip, it will switch the flip itself. Whatever yeah. you get it. So it goes like, and goes back. <clears throat> but it like, you look at her arm and like, if you didn't know that they were that it opened up, you would have no idea. She looks just like a human. Precision engineer. Yeah, her name is. Um... So. You thought her name was Betty. You like misheard right. her, but her name is uh, uh, Beta Dash T. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> it's the robot thing. Beta T, <laughs> and I thought it was Betty. You just and I just I never guess. saw clarification. No. So um, it's fucking ridiculous. So everybody else knows this is an android, but me, I'm assuming, and I'm falling in love with it. Yeah, they're like, yeah, Are people are just like. Me? They go look, Aaron. So one guy's like, Aaron, you wouldn't be the first person to uh, to fall in love with an android. He's like, I've been there, brother. There's a um. He invites you. There's a uh, like a support group, uh, for people who have fallen in love with androids, right. and they get together once a week and they just you know talk it out. This guy, his name is um. Uh, Jacob Jacob Zebulon well, What's the name of this group of guys who fuck robots? Or oh, whatever. um It's called uh Fixer Uppers. Oh. oh man, that is bleak. And it's just guys who have fallen in love with 
with androids yeah who'd like do no fault of their own i mean you know and a lot of androids are programmed to be like you know like fun and funny and personable so you know what i mean so you kind of think like oh not that this woman's necessarily flirting with me but like you kind of start to fall in love with them you know what i mean i mean it happened to you so you know what i'm talking about yeah beta t that sucks this whole thing sucks later on um you found out that uh it walked home and it um slipped on a robotic uh, on a robot uh banana peel and like fell into a pool and just short circuited these things can't go in a pool what they can't even go in a pool but no they're robots yeah but so, so you're at the new metal comedy festival and yeah dude you're doing okay you know you're getting right. you're definitely getting like you're getting like 5 grand for doing this you know cool what band is playing? Uh, right now, um, well, so what it is is it's mostly um, it's like the comedy is at night, the new metal is during the day, and so right now, you uh, are kind of weird, right? So it's Slipknot. They're playing their first album, the one that's like super new metal. They're playing that one in its entirety. Okay. And so uh, you're watching and it just like, you know, brings back memories of like hyping yourself up before like, you know, sports <laughs> team events and stuff, listening to the first Slipknot record. Yeah, and Slipknot was never my thing. I was a sensitive boy. I play it um, as intro music at the Velveeta Room and <laughs> everyone hates it. <laughs> yeah. I don't need anyway. that right before an intimate comedy show. Yeah. So you are um <clears throat> so yeah, so you're watching uh corn. You know, after uh after you watch Slipknot perform in its entirety, corn goes up. They're like closing they're closing out the music portion of the fest. Yeah. They're like um they're like NMCF. We got one question for you. Are you ready for jokes? Oh, no. no. Please welcome Aaron Brooks. No. So, so like you, that's how they bring you up. And uh, they bring you up right as the sun sets. Like so like the sun's the second not the second, but pretty much like they time it out pretty well so that after the sun's only been down for like 2 minutes. That's when the laughter can start, you know? So you go out and, um, you know, fucking, uh, you have a good set, you know, it's yeah. fun. It's not like everyone is there for both. This isn't a thing where, you know, sure. you're opening for a band and some people are like, what? So like where sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't, but this is for people who know they're going to go there for new metal and laughs they know yeah. that there's comedy and they're they're psyched for it you know metal audiences if you're gonna go and do like like a perform at like a festival or whatever metal audiences are absolutely the best ones because they're all like nerds right. you know they, they don't take themselves seriously you know so you go up there and um you're wearing that pair of jinkos and like the crowd goes fucking before you even touch the mic they just go crazy because they think i'm one of them well, no, they can just, they can kind of tell like, oh, I bet this guy's being silly. You know what I mean? They can take a joke, you know? Oh, okay. So they think I'm mocking them with the wearing of my Jinkos. Yeah. Which you are a little bit. You're not like mocking. You're just doing it as like a bit. You know what I mean? And so you walk out and everyone's like, yeah, you grab the microphone and you go, hey guys, let me ask you a question real quick. Anybody here uh, remember Junkos? And like about a third of the audience is like, oh, like they're losing it, you know? Yeah. Cause somebody's like, man, I had 10 pairs and you go. And then, and then some guy yells 10 boy, somebody's lucky. And everyone just starts like dying. Yeah. Laughing. Great. The audience is killing. Yeah. Before you even say a fucking word. Um, but <laughs> so you go out and you have a, a fun set, you know, things, things go pretty well. Um, you leave. 
part of the creative work that I mentioned earlier that you're psyched about is. So what it is, is it's, it's basically backyard pro wrestling, but uh, they're all, they're wrestlers and they're also trained magicians. And so it's a combination of the two. So it's these magicians who are doing uh, like pro wrestling. Magicians? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. And so, but it's cool. Like, so, so what happens is, you know, there's storylines, there's the heels, there's the face, you know what I mean? But they all know magic uh, or stage magic. And so like the one guy, he, like he has a, um, he's a wrestler. He's known as, he's known as the, uh, He's called Mosh Cat. Mosh Cat? Yeah. And he's wearing like a suit, like a he's like an old fashioned looking uh magician. And the way that he comes out is he has like a um I guess like a like a manager, you know what I mean? Or like a valet yeah. or whatever you call him. They and they go presenting Mosh Cat. And he just runs out and the whole crowd goes fucking crazy. And so he has a tag team partner, uh, Bubba Ray, who is a magician, who's like a hick character, but also, you know, a, a trained magician. Sure. And and they're fighting the uh, the smelly boys. They're in the uh, the same stable uh, as uh, the dirty man, uh, but like he's not like a part of it. You know what I mean? But like they're like yeah. kind of like clicked up, you know? Sure. So, sure. The smelly uh, boys, I think, are a natural yeah partner to the dirty man yeah <clears throat> um one of the guys he uh he's wearing like a like a old school metal trash can as like a a costume where it has like like uh arm and leg holes for him you know what i mean yeah like oscar the grouch basically but he can like walk sure. around and then um the other guy is just like covered in like like he clearly goes to a lot of uh, drive-ins, you know what I mean, or drive-throughs or whatever. So it's just covered with like a fast food, like discarded uh, bags, napkins. Oh he's, what do you wrappings. mean he's covered in them? Like they're all over him, dude. They're like stuck on him with like gum. It looks like, but you don't really know. The so smelly the, boys. The smelly boys, and so the um. The smelly boys do this thing where like they uh they're doing like tag team match and um one of the guys they knock out and they grab the other guy and then they like pretend like they're sawing him in half, you know what I mean? Like that old school magic trick. And so and he's yeah. like, Oh he's acting like it hurts really badly. And, and like so they like open him up or whatever, or there's two, you know, the what the the top and the bottom, and the whole crowd's like, Oh, I'm going crazy for it. Yeah, you know, then they attack reattach him and stuff, then they just like tag him out. One, two, three. So it's um so they cut him in half, put him back Not together, really. and then, yeah. then, and then to you know, lay yeah. the tag on him. Yeah, that's just All one right. example of countless thrilling matches that you've been putting together for the last year and a half. Fucking magicians. So, you um. You go there and, you know, you watch uh, the matches and stuff and it does fucking people, the fans, the people that are there are like loving it. And you're like, and you look out into the crowd and you're like a hundred percent of the people that are here are loving this. And you're like, if only there were like more of them, there's only like nine people there. Nine, but, yeah, a year and, and a half, and I'm and in when nine you walk, people. And when you walk in and you see nine people there, you just you don't even know what, like, you don't even know where this comes from, but you go, Nine, and you go, What the hell? And so, uh, um, this sucks, Pat. So, this, this has been a failure on every level, but no, the product is good, man. The people who are there are. 
loving it. There's you know? nine of them. Yeah, but this is a... And I've been doing this for a year and a half. They're all scattered about the ring, too. Like, they're not like a cohesive crowd. Right. Even better. The best kind. So... Are you fucking kidding me. So, you, uh, you go into the locker room, you know, to talk to the boys. Everyone's back there. And you're like, guys... I got to tell you, that was one hell of a match. And everyone's like, yeah. And um, four of the people who came, they got in uh, two for one tickets. So you really only sold like five tickets, basically. So you're like, all right, guys, um, when we divide this up, it's like, you know, everyone gets like, you know, $2 and 13 cents. And all like the wrestlers kind of like look at each other and they go. No, Mr. Brooks, you put this together. You keep it. And you like. Your like lower lip starts to tremble as your Fuck eyes. This, this sucks. <laughs> Are you kidding me? We sell five goddamn tickets to this thing a year and a half in. Yeah. And it's a good but the ride. guys. Yeah. But the guy and the guys are like, no, man, like you got to keep it. And you just like, like I said, you're just so moved that you end up uh, just using the money to order pizza for everybody. Great. They're like pizza. The um, it's unbelievable. The d- delivery driver shows up, uh, you know, he knocks on the door and uh, he's like, hey, uh, it's Derek K from Domino's. And you're like, fuck yeah. Open the door. He's like, that'll be nine ninety five. And you're like, here's fifteen. And he's like, Thanks, mister. Close. Show me fifteen dollars. Yeah. So he used it to order a uh, a medium pizza with a pretty hefty tip on top of that, Brooksy. We d- we did this show for for a medium pizza. Split between five people. <laughs> yeah, basically. This fucking sucks so bad. So you're 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 like, all right, like so you kind of like, you know, give the pizza to the guys and they're like, uh you hungry? Here, everybody, yeah. a single slice of pizza. Yeah. Congratulations yeah. on a job well done. <laughs> they're like, Oh, aren't you gonna have any, Mr. Brooks? And you're like, No, you guys, you guys enjoy. <clears throat> they're like oh yeah so you walk into your office and um you sit down and you're not even really like you're not that upset because you actually like brought your food from home you know and so you're like whatever i'll let the guys you know have at it as you pick up a turkey club wrap It is so tightly wrapped that for a second, like, you don't even want to, like, touch it for fear of it, like, you know, uncoiling at a, you know, really intense pace or whatever. And so. (laughs) So you kind of, like, pick it up. And it is. Tight in your hand. You don't know tightly how you coiled. can. Dense. Yeah, a, t- a, a tightly coiled sandwich. It's a tight, dense wrap. Yeah. So you're like, you look at it and you go, I've been waiting for you all day. You bring the, um, <clears throat> you bring that wrap right up to that eager, yearning it's mouth. Good. Gross. And then you hear, hey, Aaron. Oh, fuck. Hey, Aaron. Fucking. And you go, huh? And you look down. About it. And (laughs) there's like a a bag of uh, chips there, you know? Um, Yeah. (laughs) Herman's salty chips. And next to your bag of Herman's is like a wrapped up 
pickle spear, you know? Yeah, yeah. And you see that like the the saran wrap that it was wrapped up in has like kind of like come off of it. And you kind of look down and you're like, what? Who the hell was that? And you hear down here, buddy. Bucks. You look down and the pickle now has like large, like kind of cartoon eyes. Yeah. And sometimes they kind of, it's that weird cartoon thing where sometimes they're like, they're on him, but sometimes they almost exist off of his face. You know what I'm talking about? Like his eyes kind of float. They're like googly eyes. Yeah. And you look down and you go, it has like a big smile and you go, what the hell? And he goes, it's me, Bill the Dill. <laughs> and now there is a jet black leather jacket kind of floating around the pickle. And it has like armholes on it and they're out, but there's nothing coming through, you know? Yeah. There's ghost the sleeves. Yeah. In a top, the top of this fucking pickle is a thick jet black pompadour. Yeah. He goes, hey, Eric. <clears throat> I'm here to get you out of your pickle. He goes, do you have a minute? <laughs> what the fuck is going on? <laughs> so he goes on to uh, explain to you that he's part of this like underground intelligence network, basically called the pickle clan. And anywhere that there is a pickle, the pickle clan can see what's going on. So they can see like, everything they're not always able like it's, it's a little murky as to like how their rules exactly work but they don't necessarily like interfere you know what i mean yeah so he's like i'm here to get you out of your pickle aaron he's like you're professional wrestling it's not gonna last much longer buddy yeah, I know that. We're selling five tickets a year and a half in. You don't have to rub it in. He goes, I can help you with that, Aaron. What do you mean? He goes, the Pickle Clan. We're very powerful, buddy. <laughs> I can get people to come and watch all your matches. You'll be successful beyond belief, buddy. You just got to do one thing. What's that? You have to kill a man. I'm not killing somebody to sell wrestling tickets. I'm not killing somebody to sell fucking wrestling tickets. He's like, well, well, buddy, hang on. He explains to you that this is um, a guy... He's a uh, he's a serial killer. Like he's not a good guy. What he does is um, if you play, uh, it took a second for the cops to realize this, but if you play clarinet, he'll come kill you. So what do you mean? If you play clarinet, he's going to be murdering junior high kids. No, these and are high adults. Schoolers. So like, so what happens is these are people who play in like, or like professional orchestras or whatever, you know what I mean? People who are playing with like symphonies and, and shit or whatever. And so He's murdering professional musicians. Yeah. Professional clarinetists. Why? What the fuck? Why is nobody so, trying to stop him? Well, cause no one can, no one, no one can, can find him. Only the pickle clan. Knows where, where he's is at. He? He's like, the clarinet killer is uh staying uh at there's uh this is a few years down the road. Applebee's is now uh offering like hotel rooms as well. Okay, now we're talking t- there's like an Applebee's and then there's like a bunch of like uh you know short term kind of a hotel motel kind of things on the second floor. So you, you basically rent out it's like a hotel room above an Applebee's. Okay. And he's in room 
6B. Outside, that's like, you hear like thunder and a bolt of lightning striking in the distance. Do you do it? Yeah. I go to the Applebee's. I'd order a sizzling hot plate of fajitas. Yeah. I'd come wearing black slacks and I'd have a black polo shirt on. I'd go up to 6B with the sizzling fajitas in my hand and I'd knock on the door. Um, This guy answers the door. He's like, um, he's probably about like five, 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 six, you know, he's wearing yeah. um, pajama pants. No shirt. He's like, I'd say, uh, oh, sorry. He goes, go what? Ahead. He goes, oh, room service. Wow. You guys came quick. Come on in. I go, yeah, uh, you ordered the, the fajitas, right? He's like, fajitas? It kind of looks confused. And he goes, no, 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 man. No, man. No, it was, it was a burger. Oh, he goes, I must have the wrong room. He's he, like, I say, I'm sorry. I'll come back up here with your burger. He's like, but I'd say, all right, uh, man. But don't these fajitas look good? And he looks and, and he I'd goes, like, I'd like, I'd like, uh, hold them out to him. Yeah. And he looks and he goes, you know, it's funny. Every time I go to an Applebee's, I always order a burk. But I got to be honest with you. Every time someone walks past with a pan of sizzling fajitas, I always know in my heart that I ordered the wrong thing. I go, he looks well, here, let me help you. And then I, I would smash his face into the plate. <laughs> and then I would... I'd have a glove, you know, and that yeah. things like cast iron, then I would just beat him to death with the fajita pan. So you take him completely by surprise and just smash yeah. his face into that fucking pan. And he doesn't even have a chance to yell or even really react before you have just bashed his fucking skull in. Sure. You um you look down at yourself like you're just completely like covered in his like blood and like you know brain and skull and stuff like that and you're like holy take that shit. shirt off so you you start to take it off and um you hear like someone be like all right applebee's room service and they just like leave some food outside and walk away and yeah. then it's the guy's like burger on the burger is like a pickle spear yeah you blink and suddenly it's like bill the dill and he goes like sure he goes great job buddy and he kind of like do and like jumps over towards you kind of like almost like he can float through the air, you know? And he just kind of like scrubs all over you kind of just like does a thing where he like anyone, anyone looking at this, it looks like, uh, you know, the Tasmanian devil when he like spins around a lot, you know, yeah, and there's like yeah, that yeah. weird motion and stuff. That's kind of what it looks like, except it is bright green in the full moonlight. Jesus and Christ. After like a few seconds, he kind of like pops off of you and you're just like completely clean of like anything. And he goes, you did it, Aaron. You saved lives today. Good. You get um, suddenly like your phone rings. You look down. It's um, this guy. Uh, his whole thing is he he uh, his name is uh, uh, Terry <laughs> Force. And he's like a big strong man and like his magic, like the stuff that he does is like um, he has a, a thing set up where um, it's like the bullet catch, you know, what I'm talking about, except it's uh, people's fists. They try to like punch him in the face and he like, ah, like opens his jaw really wide and oh, he's able to like stop him that way. Oh, my God. Yeah. And like. Sometimes like 50 people in a row will try to do it to him. And he just, and every single time he stops them, the crowd goes absolutely apeshit. He stops them with his mouth to be clear. He's catching their fist in his open mouth. Yeah. It's gross. But that guy's so, sick all the time. He go, he's like, boss, you got to get down. You got to get down here. He's like, you're never going to believe what's happened. He's like, 
It's like, there's like 700 people here. It's like, he's like, we're putting on a show tonight, brother. You're like, I'll be oh, right man. there. And <laughs> you kind of like look down and like now the uh, the spear, Bill the Dill has just turned back into a regular pickle spear. You pick it up and you kind of like look at it and you kind of hear like almost in the back of your head, you hear like, um, don't worry, Aaron, Aaron, Aaron. We'll take it from here, here, here. You're like, all right. You flick the pickle up in the air, open your mouth, and it just slides right down that tight little throat, straight into oh, God, the stomach. Gross. And you hear Wing! tight little throat. So you run to the um you know, you guys uh rent out um like part of like a gym, you know what I mean? That's like your whole thing. Yeah. And so um you like run there and there is a line out the fucking door. And you're like, holy fucking shit. And you run to like the, the locker room and you're like, guys, for the past year and a half, we've been putting out the best fucking product in this town. You know it and I know it. It's all been building to this. This is our night, boys. They're all like, yeah. And you're like, now go out there and wow, these people. Oh, no. And they're like, yes, sir. And like, they all like run out. You kind of like stand there in um, the empty locker room. And you're just like, kind of like taking a second, just like take a deep breath. You know what I mean? Yeah. You run outside. This uh the smelly twins, they're like cutting promos, you know what I mean? The crowd is going yeah. absolutely insane. And you just and you just like look out and you think to yourself, like, holy shit. I am exactly where I need to be. And then um, suddenly you kind of like feel like a like a few like really sharp points of impact like in your heart and you go like uh, uh, and you go what the fuck and you look what down the fuck and uh, stuck inside your heart are like several no. no really sharp puzzle pieces fuck you and you look up and uh, <laughs> the newest uh, like wrestler that you have is this guy. Uh, he's like standing on, he's like standing on the top rope. He's dressed just like, uh, kind of like the Riddler. You know what I mean? And he goes, you've been pierced by the puzzler. And then he throws a bunch of like, re like razor sharp, uh, puzzle pieces at your neck and just slices your head clean off. God damn it. Why? I gave this guy a job and he kills me. The puzzler takes over uh, the wrestling league and right. takes it to like new heights where people are like, right. they Fuck just him. can't believe that. <laughs> so fucking pointless. <laughs>